Welcome back to our continuous semi-regulated disaster. Today it's time to fix the tractor. The good old Yanmar YMG 1800D. From when tractors were tractors and you could stand on them. I think it's a pretty hard value to beat. It does pretty much everything. But time to replace some cooling system components. I already have the side panel off here because I replaced this lower hose the other day. But now the radiator has finally sprung a leak out of this area, I believe. And the water pump has been sloppy for a little while now and uh, sometimes doesn't want to turn. <laughs> So we have here a new radiator, water pump, and belt, and of course water pump gasket. Now it looks like everything is going to line up here. Everything is pretty much the same. The ports are not at exactly the same angle, but it looks like it'll work. Looks like both of the new ones are angled a little bit more sharply. And the old ones there, no big deal. And then also, there is only one small port on the bottom here, where the original has these two. But this one here is for draining. So we just lose that convenience. It goes down to this plug here. Of course, if I really want to retain that convenience, I could put a T in this other small line that I just replaced and attach it to back to that drain plug. So, no big deal. And then it has the bracket for the reservoir bottle in the same place. Looks like that should be okay. So, to make it easy to access this job, I think I'm going to remove the air intake hose here, disconnect it there at the air filter box and over here. And on this side, of course, I'll have to detach the reservoir bottle and set it aside. And I will go ahead and remove this other side panel because it's easy. Four bolts there. Here, 10 millimeter. I love a machine that's got lots of 10 millimeter. Just gotta get around my hydraulic line here. Fortunately, that's flexible. Over here at the intake hose, more 10 millimeter. Alright, and really, you could just swing that out of the way to uh, help keep stuff out of the intake. And to the reservoir bottle, where I'll use the 10 millimeter. And that's just water at this point. Now I'll use my convenient drain plug, which is a 17 millimeter. Come on! There it is. And as I said, this is all just water at this point. Then we have the upper hose using the 10 millimeter. Take this reservoir hose out of the way. Now I think I'll detach this fan shroud and see if I can weasel it out of here. And for that I'll be using the 10 millimeter. 
And two more on the other side. Now, let's see here. It doesn't look like that shroud's going to go anywhere right now. So we'll continue with the lower hoses. Well, looks like the old uh, convenience drain port is a little plugged up. Isn't that always the way? And there's that, and I'll just tuck that down as I'm not going to be using it right now. The hose to the convenience drain port. I really like these wobbly extensions. They give you a little bit of flexibility without losing control. So I'll be using that on our lower hose. Now I want to make some room to move the fan shroud out of the way a little more to pull that lower hose off. And so I'm going to take the belt off here by loosening alternator or generator or whatever it is in this case. This one is a 13 millimeter. Not moving yet. I think I'll have to loosen the lower one. Or maybe just the one at the other end of this arm here, since this slot is not made in an arc which is a water pump bolt anyway. So back to this lower bolt, which is a 17 millimeter. And there it goes. Slip that belt off. Get out of the way, you. Slip that belt off. There, now I've slipped the fan shroud into that area. Having pulled our alternator or generator back out some to make the room for this to slip in there. Now there's a fair bit of room to pull off that lower hose. Here I've just noticed that our electrical generation device has permanent magnets. So I would guess that's what you call a generator. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Yeah. There we go. Lower hose off. Now we may detach the radiator. The 13 millimeter. Nice bolts, eh? This thing's probably nearly 30 years old. And come on. I just bent that flange out of the way a little bit. And out comes the radiator. Ah. Lower tube interfering with fan. Alright. So, we just revolving door that. There we go. Radiator out. And filthy. And now we can clean that screen properly. Too much pollen around here. And there you see the difference in angle on those ports. Get the radiator out of there. Finally get this fan shroud out of the way, so we can get to this water pump. There's the old belt. And we'll first detach the fan here using our 10 millimeter. And there we are. And with that comes the pulley. Well, I've still got that 10 millimeter on. Look at this top bolt. And then back to the 13 millimeter. I'll finish removing this one. And then the others. These things are different lengths, so you'll have to note where they go. 
using the new water pump would probably be a good way to do that. Now, with all the bolts out, of course, it's probably not going to fall right off because you got a gasket there and all. But uh, that's no problem. You just take a three pound hammer and wind up and, and give it a gentle tap. And there we are. There's your problem there. Oh my. So, from the look of this, the impeller's fine. This is probably just a bearing issue and could probably be rebuilt fairly easily. So we'll hold on to that one. And that pump is an Ison, who makes parts for Toyota. Well now, we're going to clean up the mating surface on the engine here. And it's nice to have a proper gasket scraper because a razor blade will want to curve on you and dig in. This will stay nice and flat. And then some kind of delicious solvent. And we'll do the new part too, in case there's some uh, oil on there to prevent corrosion. Now, we have a small tube of water pump oriented gasket sealant. And we only want a very thin layer on both sides of this gasket. So it's only here to seal up the imperfections. Like this one. It's a fairly rough spot in the water pump there. See, if I had a mill, I'd fix that. But anyway, you know, now there's already too much oozing out of there. If you don't want to get this all over the place, or you'll just be clogging things up. So just a very thin layer on both sides. And then we place our new water pump squarely into position without smearing the goo all over the place. Here, man. There it goes. And as always, we get all of the bolts tightened as far down as you can by hand before you start tightening any of them any further to ensure that everything is lined up and resting evenly. And then of course remember that this bolt is long for a reason. And put the freaking generator bracket in place. Now that the radiator's out we can get a better shot at the lower generator bolt here which we'll now want to turn in the loosening direction again for when we put our belt on. There, now it stayed loose and I can easily move that. Then we'll begin tightening these gradually in a crisscross fashion so as to seat this evenly. I don't have torque specs for this, but I don't generally use them, so I do this by feel. They don't have to be very tight. I kind of use one finger at the ratchet and feel where it wants to stop. And then of course we'll have to loosen that generator bracket again, but I want to tighten it right now to help seat everything first. Maybe take a little break. Let the sealant cure. And get that last little 10 millimeter headed bolt which really doesn't need to be tight. Now in replacing the lower hose, remembering the angles on the ports of the new radiator are sharper, we want to consult that while we position this. So it'll be a little bit more angled than before. Not all the way to that angle I think. We'll, we'll clamp it there and then we'll twist the hose slightly like that. Uh, 
And installation is reverse of removal, in theory. So, uh, with that thing on that thing and this thing on there. And once again, these do not require very much torque. Loosen that just enough for that to pivot, and there we're in place. There. Now we won't worry about that yet. So we get all the other stuff in place. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we've got to get this fan shroud in place before the radiator, which uh, is kind of in the way of getting that lower hose on. So it's See if I can slip that out of the way a little bit. Taking advantage of the flexibility of this fan, hopefully without breaking it. There. And there's a little room to get my hand onto the lower hook. I found a new clamp here at the bottom there. And I'll try to get that new radiator in place. Uh, this has this reservoir hose in this side clip for some reason. Apparently some different application. Flip that out of the way. Let's see if this thing fits. Let's see if that's enough. And now the revolving door situation with the fan blades and the lower outlet again. There we go. Hey, that looks like it'll work. And the mounting holes line up, at least on one side. How are they over there? Uh, yep. Oh. All right. Uh, I heard they got I see the top one. Oh, I see the edge of it. Not the diddly. Yeah. There it is, eh? Yeah. All right. And before I go ahead and mount this rigidly, let's get this lower hose in place. Almost. Almost. There we are. Let's do it. Uh, make a C roll. C roll? Okay. There's C roll. And the small hose. Wiggling, more wiggling. All right, now we can bolt the radiator in and put the fan shroud on. I think it's lined up. Oh, it's going, we'll get one on the other side. Oh, that's a little awkward. It's gonna go. They're not quite perfectly aligned. I have never liked this screen, and I'm going to leave it out. You know, it keeps the finer things out of your radiator fins, but these fins have a wider spacing than the original radiator. I'm going to give it a try like this. You do what you want. You can slip it in like so, anyway. Now we weasel the fan shroud back into place. Hopefully without breaking off the fan. Weasel, weasel. And oh, we get a slip it behind that bracket. There. And almost. 
And there you see I have my clamp in exactly the wrong orientation. And it's blocking the fan shroud from going down all the way, so I have to rotate that. Yeah, with the clamp rotated correctly, the fan shroud goes in place. Ah, let's see about this angle on this top hose. Wonderful. See if this reservoir bolts up to this new bracket. Hey man. Oh, it's gonna go. Yep. A lot easier than lining up the radio. So to cut this hose to go to the bottom of this reservoir bottle, uh, my cap with the right angle fitting is all broken, and uh, I'll make something later. I too zoomed in. That'll do. That'll do. Tighten the generator. This doesn't need to be tremendously tight. Now, until we make sure this doesn't leak, we'll just run water. And after testing, we'll drain a bit out. We've got some antifreeze. Getting, uh, you getting, uh, getting a good water shot there. Can, can you folks tell what kind of water this is? Is it coming out the bottom?